of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wilson seconds. Those in favor and was that unanimous? Did I get a <clears throat> Thank you all. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Okay. You'll hear some more about some of these projects when the uh, uh, superintendents speak, but uh, very briefly, an uh, update on our whiteboard list of things going on got quite a few things. Uh, the uh, waste treatment plant uh, lift, sta uh, lift station upgrade, the $8 million SRF loan project is on target and is still looking uh, favorably to the receipt of materials and everything for a mid-May 2022 completion. Um, The um, school, school View lift station, uh, that was the uh, lift station to uh, support the infrastructure requirements for the new jail. That upgrade is running right on schedule. I'm happy to report it will be completed and ready to hook up the week of 10-11. So that's just around the corner. And uh, the, I got I to say the construction company who's handled that TG folks I had mentioned to some of you about who is, who is it's a veteran owned construction company out of the Mishawaka Elkhart area and 80% of their employees are vets my gosh you've been out there watching it was like a beehive they did a great job um, the uh, we have a new salt barn that's been designed for the uh, uh, street department our uh, current uh, shelter is falling down after years of, of use and uh, lots of weight tonnage against it uh, that has been uh, design approved and uh, will be completed by uh, by November and it's it looks something like a an Air Force Quonset type hanger and very very substantial that's moving along uh, the downtown lighting project and speakers see by driving down Main Street that that's moving along pretty quickly. Uh, the west side is completed as far as the lights going up mm -hmm. and the plan was tonight have having those lit to see in fact uh, we've taken it in halves so that the, the town was never darkened completely and then the east side they've started on this afternoon continue on that. The speaker people are following right right behind. They've been working on the west side today. Uh, the concrete fella will come in tomorrow morning and uh, he can go through and pour about 10 a day is what he's saying. Got uh, 27 lights. He'll be right behind the speaker guy going very quickly. So things are looking pretty good for having it all wrapped up by uh, October the 9th for the car show. Randy, please make a note. I, I was going to tell Dwayne, I don't know that he's going to make it back, but we want to make sure we make a note that next week after those.
those guys are pretty well done. We get downtown swept and cleaned up and ready for the, the car show folks. Okay. Um, the, uh, the infamous pool barn that had fallen down that uh, we were working on doing something different there to, to protect our, our clarifiers. Uh, those are being uh, worked on right now and there will be a, a lid affair for those and that's being worked on by Commonwealth as well and that is moving along and will be completed before the winter time because that's when it gets critical. And we don't want any freezing going on there. Uh, is it uh, next, first next week, Randy, we start the uh, Hazen parking lot project behind uh, Hazen's building there on Main Street on 7th and Main. Hi, Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, we were waiting on a, a structure that's going to be put in the parking lot there to, uh, well, big tank to take care of the storm water issue there. And we have issues like that all over town. That was what we did to rectify the issue for the, in front of the bank on uh, Ninth Street uh, and we're continuing to work on that one that that brought a couple of things to light that we had no idea of there is a storm drain that runs down Monroe Street to the north about what advanced magnetics in front of advanced magnetics Randy it's it's just off 8th Street on the north side. Okay, just before you get to advance, uh, years ago there was apparently some telephone cable that went across there, and rather than move the cable, they thought, well, we'll just drop it down and change the size of the storm sewer pipe. Well, reduce it down. Well, created a backlog, obviously. The tank has relieved quite a bit of that, but we want to get into that uh, very soon and see if we can rectify that. That line may even be an analog line from a phone company. We just need to get in there and check it out, see if we can get that rectified. Um, the uh, the alley beside RTC on the east side, uh, we're going to redo that. That will be done by 11 one. That's way overdoing. It's in very bad shape. Uh, we've we've had discovered. Uh, and you'll hear about this for the ARPA fund request. We've discovered two water main lines in the city. Derek will speak to that a little bit. Uh, that need to be looped. Uh, they were put in, they were rather long lines through a residential area, and there should have been a looping process to keep the circulation of the water so that when we do have flushing of uh, water hydrants and such, we don't have uh, as bad an issue with the brown water or, or have it continue for a longer time than it should. So Derek will be speaking to that. Um, Marcus, the Baker Tilly financial folks, and, uh, and the mayor, we've been negotiating with Republic now on uh, building of a transmission line which is a large vacuum sewer line, sewer line sewer main that will run from uh, uh, run from the uh, the, the uh, republic facility out uh, north of town to clear our waste treatment plant and leaching will be able to pipe to us rather than truck to us we're going through that with uh, the republic folks right now we've got some pricing with Marcus back there. I don't see him. Yeah, he was out of town. Uh, it's roughly a five million dollar project and uh, we're working with the Republic folks. It, it's such an important project to them. They're contemplating paying for it and then dedicating it over to us to maintain. So that's what we're negotiating right now. Um, Roof at the Round Barn Pro Shop. Uh, there will be work on that starting next week. Uh, we're needing a new roof out there. It will be uh, it will be something that's uh, 2021 vintage, but it will look like the shake shingles from the, from the day. 
but it'll be more substantial and last a long time. And we've checked with historical value folks on that round barn and everything, and they kind of chuckled at us down in Indianapolis and said, Mayor, you know how many historical buildings have new forays and glass doors and everything else? And said, you know, do what you need to do. It's your money. You have to preserve it some perfection. So we've got an okay there. Um, the pickleball uh, court that uh, was discussed at some length uh, with uh, some folks, some private folks who wanted to uh, uh, raise the monies for a pickleball court but have it placed somewhere in the uh, city parking uh, park program someplace. The, the place that was chosen is behind the uh, current pool, the old parking lot uh, behind the pool, and uh, the city's participation there we just just had it uh, paid, uh, milled and paid to be ready for that. And the folks are getting their monies together, but they look to have that completed very soon. And thank you, Mr. Heidi. That was that was a good project. Didn't take too long at all. Uh, splash pad next month. There'll be some work starting on the splash pad, which is going to be located in the main park between. Uh, the basketball courts and the main pavilion, right in the middle area there. Mm, no. Farther, Other farther side. to the north. It'll be on the west side, between Manitoba and Tom Right, Randy? Yeah, between Manitoba and the pavilion. Between Manitoba Mountain and the pavilion, yes. not the courts. Okay. It was um, originally by the courts. Okay. We still taking down a tree? It's already gone. <laughs> Did we take it from the right place? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, safety and maintenance procedures are now being reviewed for the pool. Uh, we've had some issues at the pool, and uh, those are long overdue being updated. And we've got a safety coordinator, uh, Bob Hoffman, that we deal with. He's working with us on that, and we will have that all in place with the open. Next year. And then finally, uh, we are still working on the Apache Drive design for the south end of town, uh, which would connect uh, the, uh, the, the road out there past Novelty and the bank with uh, Highway 14. USI is working on that design for us, and the, the uh, uh, plan would be to uh, try to get a community crossing grant for that. And one more thing, I almost forgot. Speaking of community crossing grants, we are in the process of working with uh, some folks right now to uh, uh, finish the paving project on Main Street. You know, NDOT's done such a great job doing 14 and Pool 31. We're going to finish it, hopefully first quarter of next year, clear to uh, uh, Monticello Road. And in that process, we're going to do a little excavation and work on the storm sewers going down Main Street, enlarging those. And people that we've got, the engineering firm we've got, looking at that, will also be looking uh, to help us apply for a ready or for a community crossing grant for that as well. We've already talked to the NDOT folks, folks who've been on site here, their engineers and staff has been to see us. We've mentioned that. He said that'd be a great project. So. We're going to pursue that as well. So we got a lot going on. Anybody got any questions? Is, did, uh, while you're talking about that, is there a conversation about a traffic signal at this intersection right out here? Right out here, we did an investigation on that, and the problem is we're landlocked on that to have the uh, the room for for the turns and the light and everything. We need. Uh, property from the other three corners and the one over here is practically nothing there's just zero there so we've kind of put that on hold for right now that would take uh, acquiring some property of course no problem over here on this corner but right. you know. anything else okay Uh, got a public hearing this evening re 
regarding the uh, uh, additional appropriations for the 2021 budget. Uh, so I would entertain a motion to open up the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Wilson. And those in favor, open the meeting. Okay, Jan. Okay, the meeting is open. Um, <coughs> This is uh, resolution 05-2021, and uh, uh, Councilman Andy, we, uh, we've we already had uh, the first reading, have we not? No, no? Th this is the additional appropriation. This is for, uh, if you recall correctly, when I met with the DLGF, we discovered that the 2020 oh, okay. budget, yeah. we had some zeros on our ordinance that shouldn't have been there, so we need to, Put the money, put the uh, budget in place for this year for these funds. When uh, in the system we use for the state, the gateway, there's four or five different areas we have to copy, and the transfer all nine of us missed. Yeah. <laughs> we had some zeros on that ordinance, yeah. so uh, so that's what this is doing to correct that for the 2021 budget and give us our full budget for spending for 2021. So we had some discussion on. Because we didn't have a, enough council members to move forward. No, we had to have a public hearing. Public hearing as well. I think we were relying on council members. You know. mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, uh, so uh, do I have a motion for first reading of resolution 05? No, you want to read it. Right. I'm sorry. Resolution. Do you want the notice to taxpayers too? Sure. Sure. Read it. Do the reading, but then you have to open the floor to the public too. Do I have a motion for the one reading? So move it. We're going to read it in the public hearing. Yep. We open oh, I'm the sorry. Public hearing. I'm sorry. Well, we 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 certainly need to identify it for discussion. So um, yeah, we can't we can't act. But go, but go ahead and read it for discussion purposes. In its entirety. Resolution 5-2021 additional appropriation where it has been determined that it is not necessary to appropriate more money than was appropriated in the annual budget. Now, therefore, Section 1 be resolved by the Common Council City of Rochester, Fulton County, Indiana, that for the expenses of the taxing unit, the following additional sums of money are hereby appropriated out of the funds named and for the purposes specified subject to the laws governing the same. Park Fund 1515. Um, Personal expenses, $362,050. Supplies expenses, $117,150. Services charges expenses, $234,800. Capital expenses, $124,000. Tax cap, $25,000. Total for park fund, $863,000. <coughs> MBH fund, 2010. Personal expenses, $469,300. Supplies expenses, 100,500. Services charges expenses, 558,100. Capital expenses, 107,000. Tax cap, 48,000. Total for MBH fund, $1,282,900. Okay. Any uh, there's more in that we keep going? Oh, I don't think you got all the numbers, didn't you? No, there's, no. I think there's five funds. That five funds? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. CCI fund 2050 services and charges expenses 30,000 capital expenses 16,000 total for CCI fund $46,000 CCD fund supplies expenses 30,000 capital expenses 290,000 tax cap 9,000 total for CCD fund 329,000 CFF fund 2570 services charges expenses 50,000 tax cap 3,205 for a total of 53,205 dollars 
Redevelopment fund, supplies, expenses, $500. Services, charges, expenses, $31,000. Capital expenses, $120,000 for a total for redevelopment fund, $151,500. Economic development fund, $4,270. Services, charges, expenses, $140,000. Capital expenses, $10,000. Total for economic development fund, $150,000. Okay. Any discussion, questions? from the council? No? And I'd open it up to the public. Questions? All right, then I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Moved by Smith, second by Garrett. Those in favor? Okay, the meeting is closed. Uh, into the business portion, back to the business portion here. Uh, the action on resolution 05 2021. Uh, how about a motion for a reading by title only since you've already so moved? <laughs> That's pretty quick. Those in favor? Okay. Resolution 5 2021 additional appropriation. Man, we went right through that. Mm -hmm. um, my voice. Do I have a motion for the acceptance of resolution 5 2021? So moved. Second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? So moved. Unanimous. Okay. I don't lose my evidence if you have a. Okay. <laughs> you got a copy. <laughs> Okay, down to old business. Uh, to Linda, I see you're back. Linda yes. Johnson. Yes. Linda Johnson with Area 5 Agency Adult Assistance Guardianship. Or did I get all that? Did I in there? I think you got it pretty close. Good. Good. Uh, thank you. Have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Gittin. Uh, folks, thank you for letting me come back and not shutting your door closed in my face. <laughs> And, no, I'm very happy to be here to share this evening. Well, I think here. last time we made you wear a mask. I think so. I think okay. so. No, it's great to be here. I've always enjoyed coming up here, seeing this pretty city. And uh, I just want to say thank you to you. He uh, supported us with our invitation to the Bar Association meeting in August, and my staff coordinator attended that, brought back some good information about guardianship. So we're always willing to learn and attend and support. I was here in June uh, with a packet of information, a uh, letter of intent about what our program is. And you guys do a superb job here in your city and community of all these fine programs and supporting young and old and middle at range and, and a lot of things from A to Z. Uh, we tried to and did introduce a couple of years ago this program and uh, actively as much as we could through the COVID last year continue the program and we're here again with our fall funding for the indiana supreme court grant in june um, i prepared uh, the council and mayor for asking uh, a donation uh, the budget is minimal uh, the supreme court actually designed this back in uh, uh, 2020 while 2014 era and have a state guardianship office it's our leadership and have written this into probate code 29 so instead of a creator we're just an executor of what they would like for us to do throughout the uh, entire state in all 92 counties we represent five counties one of our sixth county but they are covered by fort wayne so fulton and miami were our last two counties to add and we want to continue to serve Fulton County and all of the counties uh, with this guardianship program. And there's a fly driving me crazy. And that is advocacy and guardianship with the least restrictive alternative by law for those with incapacitation diagnosis, whether it's mental, physical, or uh, the elderly with dementia. And we become generally their guardian and uh, person, a person and a state and see to their care, 
different ones have asked, well, how does that fit with mental health counseling, mental health um, folks, nursing homes, etc. But most of those entities cannot make the medical decisions and financial decisions for these folks. They cannot assign them where they must live or seek shelter for them without that person agreeing to it. And that's just a short layman's way to put it. When there is someone who does not have any family or any appropriate family, as we've gotten several cases from APS who may have been exploited or abused, like the two individuals from Fulton County that we have, um, then we become essentially their family. And we see to it that they are well cared for and properly um, provided for in many, many ways. We partner with Security Federal Savings out of Logansport as our agent to become their payee rep. So all the finances are held by the trust department there, monitored in and out at our request, so there's checks and balances to be above board all the way through, the only way we would want it. We're their advocate for them, we're their voice. Uh, the program allows us to use volunteers, and rightly so, because that saves you tax dollars and monies going out, and we're so glad to do that. Going forward, we have, or should have, or have in place to have, three full-time staff members to handle the five counties. That requires a lot of miles. Last week, I put on over 500 miles. Uh, we do what we have to do when we have to do it, and we're glad to serve. Oftentimes, it takes us outside of our five counties. We have clients who are in group homes in Hartford City and Marion and in Indianapolis that are outside our five counties, but those people are our people from these five counties who in order to have the most appropriate housing and services oftentimes requires finding somewhere outside the counties. And we still are faithful to serve them and have them as a part of our family, so to speak. So with that, hoping that you all remember, and if you don't, I'll be glad to answer questions. I only brought a couple of copies, so I don't know if everybody has that yeah. letter of intent. Okay, thanks, Shada. Um, but our request, the way we broke it down, we're seeking 25,000 from each of the five counties. As a reminder, if the local dollars that we raise, then we can use for a two to one match from the Indiana Supreme Court grant, which has to be in their office on or about November 1st. We have yet to be given quite the final date, but it's usually right around that. So if I raise 20,000, that entitles me to seek 40,000 through the Supreme Court. Uh, their cap is 75,000. So we're looking for three full-time people um, with mileage, um, a few office expenses, um, things that our clients may need, the expense of Security Federal for our clients, we're looking at somewhere right around $200,000. So we've asked each county to think about it and to step forward with a total, we're hoping to target $25,000 and I've boiled that down to mayors, uh, city councils, county councils, county commissioners, any of the foundations looking for our $5,000 contribution. So that's where I am with my request. I, I said I'd give you guys some time to think about it and if I didn't hear anything, I'd and pick your brain and hope that you can come to a motion to help us continue to serve these people. We want no one left behind, children or elderly, or those who are incapacitated, and we want to be able to continue to serve and serve faithfully and well. So if you can help us carry on this quest, we would appreciate it. And if you can decide tonight, I will feel very awesome walking out of here knowing your mind. With pledge letter to follow, dollars we don't have to have until after January 1st, as this is for our 2022 budget. If there is a pocket that you want to spend by 2021, of course, we would take your dollars by the end of the year. We run that in, uh, run into that with some foundations and some um, trustees have monies they need to spend by the end of the year, so that's fine. But that's what I'm looking for tonight, and I thank you so much for your attention, and I'd be glad to answer any questions if I can. So did I, did I hear right? Uh, you are looking for, uh, from the five counties, a total of 25,000. Each county. Oh, each county. 25,000. So that 
if in theory times five that would be one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars we've raised that more than makes up for the max cap at the Supreme Court of seventy-five thousand. Well, it's a very worthwhile project. There's no doubt about that. But I heard something else too. You had two clients from our county. At this time, we had four other requests within the last six to nine months that we worked on late last year into this year. Two of those before we got to court passed away, which it often happens. And two of the others, we worked our least restrictive alternatives as we were supposed to, and we helped them find and meet middle ground so that family members could help them. Sometimes family members are uncertain as to their role, Sometimes there's some uncooperativeness. Sometimes they shy away because of the medical needs and what that means to them. And we were able to answer questions and support that. And by law, that's our role in this as well. And it takes time, investigative work, support roles, multiple follow-ups. Um, I know that sounds slow. I get that. I totally get that. Um, I will say, just as another little reminder, um, all of the judges are very supportive. Um, judge Lee here is very supportive as well as across all the counties. Judge Lett in Tipton County, where I started the first county, was Tipton. He told me uh, earlier uh, in late summer he was extremely pleased with the 22 clients we had across the five counties. And um, so I know it sounds like few, but again, we want no one left behind. And thank God that we were here for the two clients. We do have a few years which were financially exploited and sexually exploited their siblings, and it's a very unfortunate situation. Some counties has looked at this as a drop in the bucket to keep them from having to bring back county homes. Um, we've saved thousands of dollars in retrospect where we've been able to jump in to care of these people and fire and police have no longer had to. We've had as many as 22 calls from the police department on one client over in Logansport. I had 83 calls by one client to the fire department and tipped them within 10 months. So just subtle reminders, we, none of us can predict. Goodness knows, I hope there are not a lot of these clients potential clients out there in your community. They will be, however, the most fragile and the most needy that you'll come across. So with that said, I just want to help and I just, I'm standing here being an advocate for the now, for this program to be a success and to continue. And I get it, I understand your concerns. Who, who are the five counties? Fulton? Fulton. Uh, Tipton, Tipton, Howard, Cass, Fulton, and Miami. I have completed, well, I have to circle back to a couple of county councils, but I do have $5,000 voted on and approved in some of the counties at county council and, and mayor level. Um, again, we're not all the same, so I don't say that to, uh, only but to share, I'll put it that way, only to share. And um, the bulk of the 22 clients, of course, you might guess, would come from Howard oh, County. County. Right. And so with that said, when you take half of the total, then it's a much smaller number than the other four counties. So I, again, just going back to just helping understand that spread. So any other questions? Council members. I thank you so much.
Does any money come from the state level, I guess? Do you have a budget in the state? Supreme Court. Okay. That's where I get the, not just we, but every program gets a two to one uh, option right now to raise local monies. If I raise 20,000 locally across all the counties we serve, then they will match, or I can request that they match that with 40,000. And I'm going on the fifth year, going into our fifth year, and have been very blessed with their kindness to approve every request and match that I've asked for. And I have gone for the max of 75,000. Last year, I think I explained we had a lot of COVID money and one staff person we were slated to hire because of COVID and a lot of lockdowns, we were able to continue with two staff. So we carried all that money forward in the 2020, 2021. So our request for 2021 were less than that because we were able to do that. We had kind of a bridge over, if you will. But this year going forward, uh, I think this is probably the pace we'll stay on unless I get overwhelmed and we see uh, 15 or 20 referrals coming at us from every county plus. Sometimes we see four or five referrals in one week. We, that's not uncommon. Sometimes we get several one day to the next, but it varies. You've got, uh, you've got everybody earmarked in our North Central, <coughs> but Clinton County, you've only got one county there that isn't that is in our region that you don't cover clinton clinton yeah. and i believe they are not served by the program if my memory is serving me correct there are a few around the state well about a little over half are served 51 out of 92 counties currently are served i don't know what the grants this year will bring in i do know that there are some other new counties looking at being added to corresponding <coughs> programs at this point, I want to get my feet settled more on the ground before I ever take any more. Where I was headed with that, uh -huh. and I have, this is one pet peeve I have with being a small fish in a large region. Take a Howard County, they probably have 15 or 16 people that you're servicing. We there is about 11 or 12, I think. 11 or 12. We, we just okay. had a death, I think, so. Okay, so. It's not, it's, it's bigger, but it's not monumental. I actually thought CAS might be huge because of the state hospital and the influx of people that were stayed in that community. There are a lot of mental health folks that are in the community. Um, there's some that's not always appropriate for our program. We find that once in a while. Um, so I was surprised. I figured uh, Rochester or Fulton County and Tipton County would be the smallest. Uh, being more rural. Maybe Miami? Uh, Miami it remained at two last year. We're now up to, to four and have two referrals for there that we will be obtaining here very shortly. So there's been, you know, some of that back and forth that I was surprised. I, I guess where I was headed with that was, has there ever been any thought to a proration of what you expect from the counties you served? Well, I would love to do that, Mayor Ditton, but as a answer, and I'm going to answer this kind of with a flip side scenario, it is so hard to predict the cost for each client because it depends on their scenario and their needs. I had one lady this summer on an emergency guardianship in Tipton who died within two weeks, and I had her total apartment that had collections from years and years and years. So while I served her only two weeks, I spent many, many hours as she was in an emergency situation. It's hard to see that coming in a short time, the number of hours you'll spend. Someone in a nursing home that we get a volunteer place with, minimal hours from staff. I mean, we still confer with volunteers, but then, and not, not at all to reflect back on Fulton County, but back to those in group homes, and because we have no volunteers up here, then our two clients here are all ours to handle their needs and see them each twice a month, try to get, because they're siblings, we try to get them together so they continue to have a relationship. So it's hard okay. to, to try to prorate that. Okay. And so far, this early into the process, the best I know to do is try to 
go evenly and then what I tell everyone that asks is we'll turn no one away unless it's not appropriate for the program. I'm not saying that we'll only do five for that county. We'll go as high as we can go and possibly serve. Uh, and one reminder, in all counties, the attorneys very graciously serve pro bono. So we aren't using their dollars to pay for attorneys. All the judges graciously waive the court fees. So that helps. That's a little give back in every community. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure I'm wise enough to figure out what you're suggesting, which would be awesome. But. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, the numbers. Yeah. Based on the numbers. And, and I'm sure a judge along the line somewhere is asking what your average cost for client is, your average fee. Actually, no one has asked no that. No one's asked that. No one's asked that. I think because they understand it's tough to get to, and it's it's so unpredictable of the nature of each client. I mean, sometimes this city, such as one in Peru, condemned the home and they wanted these two individuals out of their way. I don't mean that mean like they were not <coughs> cared for, but they wanted to clean up the, the, the parcel of the land in the home. So what's that worth to a city when there's a scenario like that? Uh, when neighbors are being bought. I, I, I don't know how, how to get it defined. I wish I had a wise crystal ball that was clear. services sir but not guardianship and mayor didn't I want to just make sure you understand I'm not asking you for 25,000 maybe I misheard you I'm asking from you and this council 5,000 I'm looking to other grants other foundations okay. the commissioners I just want to make sure 25,000 I don't want you to fall out of your chair I'm looking for 5,000 that's your looking for 125,000 that's what five I understand that's what I understand from five counties I am that divided amongst mayors councils, commissioners, okay. foundations. Okay. So uh, okay. If you, it's been a little while since you've been here. Have you I, have you picked up anything along the way with the rest of our colleagues and I have. Yeah. I have. And I have some more grants that are due here in a couple of months. Um, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation, the CIF. There is a grant for Fulton County and Miami. Um, Corinne Lucas, uh, she was very gracious uh, that first year and supported both programs very well. I think 10,000 to Fulton County and 5,000 to Miami. Last year, they kind of dipped down because they want to you know, cover a lot of territory and COVID, and I wasn't asking for that much, as much last year. Um, those grants are due in soon. I hope I'll be um, able to get a part of that 25,000 from there. <coughs> Are you just asking for one five thousand? Yes, or between the two, I would gladly take two: one from the mayor, one from the council. But yes, I'm looking for one five thousand. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the mayor's budget, have you? Would this be an I annual? I got you the laugh. Is this yeah. an annual reoccurrence that you would come every year then? With? Yes, it is. Okay. It is, and I hope, and it's my goal to either stay the same or go less. I think we're headed to where it's looking more like this is going to be where we level out. I've been up and down these first four years that have passed, and I'm seeing that, you know, I think no matter whether we get 20 next year or we stay at two, that doesn't impact the cost. It's the cost, I know it should, but it's the cost of what we're seeing to run the program overall, mostly in staffing, mileage, a few office supplies, etc and hoping that we continue to get the volunteers to keep those costs down. Thank you, Councilman. Anybody else have anything? I guess I'd like to reach out to Attorney Perkins, who has had some experience. 
experience. So, you have anything to say, Andy? Um, I hate to put you on the spot, no, but you've had it quite a bit of experience. No, no, I think, I think guardianships are kind of, uh, uh, the need for guardianships is a coming wave as the uh, uh, population ages. Um, and uh, it is it is akin to taking on the job of uh, running a loved one's estate when they die, with the potential of even being more so, because uh, an estate is designed to be open to accomplish things and then close. You could be someone's guardian if they have a significant mental health issue. You could serve in that fiduciary capacity for, for 10 years if the situation warranted. I think that uh, uh, in, in many cases, we, as, uh, we think of a guardian as an interested family member uh, and, and our worries are, is this person appropriate to handle their finances? And in many of these cases, uh, there are a lot of finances there. It's, it's probably the more, uh, what we call the guardian of the person that comes up first and then finances are often probably second. And, and I think one of the things that, that uh, was hinted at is, is, if that person doesn't have a guardian, or, or that family member doesn't have someone assisting them with, with guardian-like duties or uh, uh, less restricted duties, uh, you will see that cost you other services over time. There will be more police runs, there'll be more visits to the ER, there'll be, there'll be more of those kind of emergency calls. And, that, and that's it, it definitely is difficult to, to quantify. I think that, uh, uh, I, I think that given, given the area we're talking about, if if you're looking for a but total budget of 125 plus what the state Supreme Court gives you, I think that's I, I think that's pretty uh, pretty reasonable uh, investment overall. So I think in terms of guardianships, uh, we mentioned the uh, the bar association. One of the reasons our, our annual uh, legal education uh, event this year was based on guardianships is there were recent changes uh, uh, to that simply because the Supreme Court is recognizing. That is a way to, to deal uh, with some of these situations that A, need, needs to have some control on it, and we need to have people doing it who know what they're doing. And, and so I, I see a lot of benefit from a, from a program like this. Are we missing people? I hope not. And please, please, all of you, audience and all, public and all, keep your ears open. Mm -hmm. Anyone can make a referral to us. Anyone. Um, L. Johnson at Area5.com. Go to Area5.com website and look under each county to find us as well. There's a referral form on there. There is the physician statement on there. So if it is someone medically, they can pull that down right away. Um, immediately let us know. Um, and, and the police and the fire department, we welcome calls from them. Mayor Denton, don't forget us. Tell your people that if anyone will answer the calls. I'll mention it on the radio. Awesome, thank you. I did some uh, radio TV and where's my friend at from the There's paper. Your TV. <laughs> yes. Yes. Your newspaper man, you got your TV man back there. You're on TV now. I realize that, that's awesome. We truly need and want this to be a community partnership. It will only be the best and catch everyone as if we have that. And I can't speak well enough or high enough about all the wonderful attorneys in the communities. And I've told please, them. Please, please, don't, don't say that to me. <laughs> Butter no, bread. Okay? Butter yeah. bread. Yeah. 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 Like, Air off the bread right now. Just a little bit. Wait till we get the money. Here's, oh, 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 okay. you, had, you had the audience right here until you said that. So I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, you know, I've told them, likewise, with them, I try to rotate. And we, we try to spread it out so that none of them are burdened with too much. We very deeply do our training. We follow the National Guardianship Standards, the Code of Ethics from the Supreme Court Office. So we try to have a petition dumbed down, if you will, to where we can incorporate and go across the counties and they can spiff it up, but we give them something, we do all the legwork. Um, we let, try me, to, let me ask you one more question. Sure, I'll absolutely. Throw it, I'll throw it to the council here. If, if we come up with $5,000, if the council decides to do that, mm -hmm. and you don't make your 25, will you be coming back to us? No, 
No. No, I'll find more grants. We'll keep going. I've got, let me say this. I have not done that yet going into my fifth year. Now, I'll come back next year this time. Yeah, yes. that's what I mean. But not for this year. No, no. You've done your due diligence. You've done what I've asked, and I'll keep going, and I'll keep turning over. More grants, more writing. So far, the Lord has been good to us, and I say that from my perspective, not to disrespect anyone's thoughts on that, but uh, we have been blessed. All right. Well, if the number is 5,000, Council, uh, what does the Council think? I think we should see where which fund to take it out of. You know, okay. We should definitely agree. If it's going to be a reoccurring ask, I would say it needs to be included in the Council's budget. Needs to be a line of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be my recommendation. Anybody from this side? I, I agree. I think it's something that would be needed. And I think yeah, it would be good for us. And where would you uh, obtain that from this year? Well, we don't have to pay anything this year, it's for next year. So I have time to figure that out. Figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> How do you sit for this year? We're fine. Okay. We've, we're fine. We do this in the fall projection for the next calendar year, and we ask for the monies starting in January. If it's February, that wouldn't be, as long as everybody doesn't do that to us, we'll be okay. Yeah. If you send me the letter the first part of January, then I can include it in one of our claims. Absolutely. So. Could, can I either have, assuming you're going to go ahead and decide something, you know, could I have, a, could you send me minutes, Shada, or, or a pledge letter, either one that shows you did vote approve X number? That I need to put in the grant. Okay. We have not order to approve anything and I and I for one have, until we discuss this at another time point I for one will say I would I would not approve anything tonight until we okay. discuss it further. My feelings I don't know how you know, yeah. I, I didn't feel like approving anything tonight personally. You would like to see this uh, postponed till the next meeting? Yes to see you know where the money's for coming be able to do that but to actually say that we're doing that tonight. Do we have the funds shot? Uh, I mean, obviously, we're not into 2022, but as of right now, the according to the DLGF, we are project our levy should be um, what they have forecasted for us. We aren't seeing anything. The only downturn we have in income will be from income taxes. That's going to be and, and wheel tax. Those are the ones. Our property tax funds, which is the general fund primarily. Those seem to be okay right now, so we should be good. Um, we shouldn't see, other than property tax caps, we're going to see a loss, an increased loss next year. Uh, it was a little over 200,000 that we will, that's part of that tax cap um, for the property tax caps. So that's just a slow increase, but we have additional additional tax monies coming in from pilot so some of that growth in the south that they didn't ask for a tax abatement so we didn't lose anything there when they convinced our residents asked for a tax abatement so some of that stuff but we won't see we uh, wings will start coming in i believe next year i can't remember their completion date um, when they open but we won't see usually it's about 18 to 24 months before we actually start seeing the tax revenue so i i don't I would not say we will have an issue if you guys choose to fund it from the general fund. Uh, if you choose to fund it right now, economic development, if we decide to go that route with it, uh, which I would verify that we can. I, with it, that was my knee-jerk reaction, but I would verify that. We're, again, we're fine cash. We have no cash on hand in that fund. But we will see a revenue loss, I think, moving in the next couple of years. <coughs> uh, that will be an impact. How much? I don't know. That's a little bit. Is it something we can plan on for next year, but revisit annually? Yeah. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Cause you guys, yeah. If you guys fund it next year in 
she says she wants to make it an annual ask, then you know a budget session you guys can have that conversation and you know, do we keep it at the same amount? Do we take it less? Do we take it more? We certainly can't do that. adopting our budget for 2022 or passing our ordinance tonight okay. for 2022. Okay. So we're not on that. The schools are on that that mid, that July 1st to June 30th. And that's but what I found in the other county. So excuse me for making any assumptions. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to, wanted to make sure that I made it clear what we needed it for so that we didn't get mixed up here. I'm here for our running of 2022, which has to be done in this fall time frame in order to include your pledges in the Supreme Court grant in November that they execute and give us in January. They give us one payment in January and one in April, I'll clarify that. And then coming around next year, which if you decide to put it in your budget, that's great, I can always come give you an update, but that's <coughs> your budget's planned, and that would be for that fall of next year for the 2023, yes. Is that clear as mud? No, I, I got that. Okay. What's uh, what's in the mayor's promotional budget? Fifteen. Ten. 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 Ten.
that we have right now that we're not looped in um, we are considering looping those in um, we know that these would qualify for the ARPA funds um, at this time we're waiting for engineering fees to come back to let us know what those projects are going to cost and then uh, we're basically just asking for your blessing to consider those for the ARPA funds to be spent on um, I don't have the prices yet for you but uh, <coughs> those total costs we're going to bring those to you guys for approval uh, they are two locations that um, we we have the most issues with right now. Um, unfortunately, they weren't looped in. Uh, they were left as dead ends that uh, accumulate quite a bit of the discoloration of water. Um, so we're trying to resolve that um, as quickly as possible. So we think these qualify for the ARPA funds with your permission to to do that. Put that on the plan. Yep, to put that on your plan. Anybody had any other thoughts about the ARPA funds? I know we passed out a plethora of literature as to what was uh, uh, eligible and what wasn't.
somebody else was walking out of the health department. My child is contagious, it just happens to be. There's no way getting in and out of that health department and social distance. I mean, that's why we are actually paying to utilize a building to do shots. So maybe considering a new location for a health department, some of that money coming to that. That was, to me, the most logical thing that somebody said. Somebody else said that we need a Y, a YMCA, that uh, our community actually goes to Logansport and Plymouth lots of times because of their indoor facilities that we don't offer here in Fulton County. Um, Did you explain that unfortunately that doesn't qualify under the ARP? Well, you know, um, you know, but, but there's... Health department comments, yeah. Yeah, I that mean, was the, probably uh, the only thing that people... We've got a representative from the health department right here, don't we? You're still the main yeah. guy, aren't you? Yeah. Um, any comment on that? Uh, did they use... Well, I know the county's, you know, had discussions about moving the health department, but it's never, you know, really not past that. Yeah, um, it's definitely crammed. It doesn't work really well with the sharks, the, the immunizations they do there now. Of course, you know, the COVID vaccines were all done off site, but they're now doing them on site. Um, it's disruptive for the whole basement of that complex when they're doing immunizations because of the number of children coming through. Not always quiet. <laughs> and, we had it and, and again, I'm just I'm kind of in the dark on this. It's been rumored there have been conversations that perhaps they move over into the sheriff's building right yeah. now. Yeah. Is that uh, still being kicked around at all? I we haven't had the board had those conversations, but you know, that'd be kind of commissioner level to, to make that kind of move. Um, you know, we looked at the building the foundations in at one time. There wasn't funds to do that at the time. Um, before the board, before the community foundation. Um, but yeah, it just all gets down to kind of funding. I think the needs there is just a matter of dollars. Maybe. Yeah, I've heard the conversation of the jail, the former post office. But, you know, Has the board made any formal request to the county? I mean, they, they're getting over $3 million in ARPA funds and right at the top of the list. Our board has not had a conversation about this. Okay. That's why, that's why I was curious that you said you guys had really, so. I mean, that's like at the top of the list. That's what those funds were generated for, first and foremost. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's not really what the health board of the health department does. That would be more like say the commissioner level of the common council. Well I mean they have to make that decision, but I mean, I mean there's not there, but we can't appropriate funds. That's not that's beyond our scope of our board. You know, if there's nothing else to spend the money on that that it, that it matches, you know, that does benefit the entire community, no matter who you are that lives within the community. And I you know, they they have some ideas, because I, I did mention, um, you know, to the health department there, and she says, yeah, we suggested one place, and, and I, said, I, I, I don't remember where it was, because it was a conversation I have to write stuff down now. Um, and it wasn't that expensive just to add on and, and be part, you know, separate, but yet part of something that's already there. And not in the basement, and not you know in everybody else's. And then you don't have to pay when we get another another pandemic. Well, I know our fifty thousand dollars for testing would still be kicking that around if we had to pull the string on that. Uh, I, uh, Ruth, it, it's it's great idea. I think I think we should at least put it on the list for the right. to be determined. Yeah. Uh, so you need to participate at some level at some point. Well, and then if the county gets involved too, then, then you know. Is there a time limit on these funds? 2023? Does they have to, they're right now, although it may change, it's, they're supposed to be allocated or at least uh, or spent by December 31st, 2023. Now, the last 
webinar I sat through, they are giving a little leeway and stating that if they're if the you know if you designate a project and due to circumstances, planning, whatever, if the project is basically on the books, ready to move, but doesn't get started, they're still going to honor the project. So because they finally realized that some of us we moved a snail's pace toward the government. Well and to <laughs> they they've uh I'm sure you probably know they they dedicated the payment to be in two shots, half of it one this year and half of it the next year. So, and it's a federal, it's all federal model of money. So there'll be federal audits involved. And if they think you've spent it for one toothpick you shouldn't have, it stops. So we we're going to go through it very academically. She's the one that has to go through the audits, hmm. but. Um, mm -hmm. I have a 36 page document that tells me just how I have to report on it. 36 pages to tell me how to report on this money. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, the yes. determination on stormwater, is that made or is that still? The, they're still they still right Yeah, they it's, still throw the term around, but nobody has really. Well, the rules are always changing, too. Exactly. Yeah, they were pretty right definitive on sewer, yep. but not storm sewer. That's kind of bizarre. There's, there's certain, the U.S. Treasury has mentioned a storm sewer, uh, and it did come up again in the last webinar, and it still was kind of an open-ended, never really got answered kind of question. So, but unfortunately for us, it wouldn't even be, you know, be hardly a drop in the bucket when we're looking at a $16 million possible infrastructure improvement for stormwater. But it gets, what it gets uh, Sanitary sewer on the other side of 31? No. We looked at that with the county. It was going to take funds from both of us. It was about what? About well, they, five, they were five, five, five to six million just because yeah. going underneath uh, 31 is is a really big deal. That's where our money's at. I suggested yeah. that right in the beginning, to Commissioner Lewis. And we didn't get a response back on it. I mean, we'll, our, our we would have won 1.3, you know, basically dropped the bucket, but their 3.8 would have taken it over the top. So, well, we you know, just, there'd have still been a shortfall there, but yeah, so it's a short, short, short fall, yeah, but it would have gone a long ways to doing it. But no, no, thought about that, thought, hey, boy, it'd be great to get those Bellwood Acre folks taken care of. How many years has that been? Um, I think we have to put that on the list and with a, like a to be determined on the yeah. dollar figure. Which one? The health department and... Well, I still think there needs to be a conversation with the county. Well, absolutely, yeah. but I, I think mean, we need to get it on our list. They're getting twice the money we are. Yeah, I, I hear you. But that, you know, like I said, if we'd have taken posture kicking that can around the block, we wouldn't have gotten the testing site back over. Sure. <clears throat> Well, and that, that's what Dawn had said, is if they would have done this, then we wouldn't have been lover. paying for the testing site, yeah. you know, yeah. so, yeah. so the extra money is going out because we don't look at what the need really is. Does so. that sound? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Now, just to remind you guys, um, formally, you, you will have to have a formal plan, which is what we're trying to schedule with our financial advisor, so that way we make sure that we're following properly what we need to do. What's our deadline for that? Well, we cannot spend any money, any of that ARPA money, until we have a plan approved and adopted. But, but it starts with the list. But you gotta get, yeah, I mean, so every conversation you have adds to the, the list to get the plan formulated. And then our financial gurus at Baker Tilly will put it together in some mm -hmm. package for us. Good. I think we ought to put, even though we're not sure where it's going to fall out, we ought to put some yeah. I mean, you know, all they can do is say no. A lot more off our legs. So are we, are we talking about a, a special meeting? Right. I mean, we talked about getting when we and we had did. to cancel it because it, you know, more than half of you weren't able to attend. So, yeah, that's what I—that's what we were trying to do was have a special meeting 
just to talk about the ARPA plan, so that way all of the, and then have Eric here, can and we, then he can. Can we try to discuss them now? We can we're not going to be here online if we're discussing them doing a salad, I'd rather. Focus on that one. Focus on that on the special meeting. You're the president. Well, you got it. You got, we've got enough pieces there now, potential things. You could eat up 1.3 pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Well, and the other one too that I know has been thrown out was premium pay for, Talk for employees. For so city employees, a lot of places have done that. You know, and I, I hate to even bring that up. Uh, but well, there's maximums to that. There's there are limitations. So there are limitations. That one hasn't changed. They, <laughs> you go you go through the whole <clears throat> process of what's an essential worker. Well, we think everybody's an essential worker. Mm -hmm. But that was, as you remember, some of the doc documents talked about that. Brian, what are you thinking on the date? If you go with our traditional, it's the second Tuesday of the month, you would be looking at October 12th. No, unfortunately, I'm gone from the 3rd to the 15th. Yep. Wow. So I could be. Oh my gosh, the 19th would be the, that's the Tuesday, and the next Tuesday would be available. Well, I'm out at that same time, but I'm not going to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, well, you, if you need, be with anybody. If you do the 19th, I mean, our regular meeting is the following Tuesday, so if there was anything else you needed to follow up with at the following meeting, you could the next week. Will that work for everyone? Or? Do it, write it down. Yeah. 19, 19, and, don't, or six. and don't send an alternate date out because John shows up. <laughs> Some people come when they're told to be in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Well, that, that was Ted's fault. Yeah. That was Ted's fault. I found out some of our employees leave early. Yeah, well, I, should, I, should, I should stick around to tell you not to break you the nose on the door. Well, okay. <laughs> you guys want to leave it at 6? Five. 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 Uh, the only thing that might be a, a wrench in this is uh, shot. Yes, sir. You know, Baker Tilly. That's the only thing that might throw a wrench in. I, and we, yeah, and we're far enough out. I'll, I think Eric will be fine. Uh, well, I'll email Eric or Tyler, either one, because Tyler yeah, is just Tyler's as well versed in this as Eric. Okay. So. Okay, thank you, Council. Okay. Uh, FEDCO Contract Economic Development, Contract mm -hmm. FEDCO. Uh, as you know, uh, the Economic Development Director resigned, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an opportunity to do some things differently. Uh, I would uh, ask the Council for their thoughts on that, and perhaps we can come to some resolution at the next meeting as to what uh, this council wants to do regarding that. I've not seen any, we haven't seen anything come forward as a plan other than to, uh, Tiffany has been made the internal director and given a paper in here. Where, where does it go from there? So, appreciate your chewing on that, your thoughts. Okay. Can, can I say something, Ted, as president of FEDCO? Sure. Can I? So I, I think the conversation in the room uh, of FEDCO has been that there's a commitment to FEDCO to keep FEDCO going. Uh, I, and I think it is, uh, the conversation has been that prior to me being able as president to be able to advertise Terry's job, we just need to make sure that the commitment levels were such that we could do that. So that, I think, is at least my understanding of when we look at what can we do better, we will look internally, but I don't think it was the overall intent, and, and Brian, you sit on that board, uh, don't let me say anything that's wrong, but I, I think the conversation was let's look at things before we go ahead and advertise the job. So I, I don't feel like, at least from my perspective, and the majority of the people in the room, that it was a let's do away with the funding of FEDCO or doing away with the director of FEDCO. If 
is that I, the, the conversations we've had just briefly have been there has to be an economic development presence. The 501c presence has to be for grants and all sorts of other state uh, situations. Uh, to what level, though, that's what this group's going to have to decide, in my opinion, to what, what commitment level. Uh, okay, then I guess on behalf of President Fedco, I would ask consideration be given to uh, go ahead and fund it in the manner that would allow us to replace our executive director uh, so that we, it's hard for us and, and certainly without that knowledge and I think Jillian might be here, it's multifaceted when you have the chamber intertwined with Fedco without a acknowledgement of available funding it's impossible for either organization to plan into next year so I would ask for uh, quick and good consideration uh, of looking at the continuation of funding FEDCO uh, so that we can continue on if, if we wait 30 days what kind of uh, pressure does that put on FEDCO for if it's another it is as Ted alluded, uh, Tiffany has been kind enough to take that interim role uh, to help us get through the gap. But uh, as anyone knows that is trying to hire now, we, I would like to get the search process going sooner rather than later. Uh, we have made a, a three-month uh, commitment to Tiffany at this time uh, with, with a 30-day review to make sure that everything is taken care of but the if we have to wait 30 days we have to wait 30 days but like I say when you're going into a new year we're here at the end of the year I uh, you have two organizations that I feel like have been uh, great assets to this community that would like to be scheduling and know that they are continuing on and, and how to structure So Fedco's intention is to replace the director. What, what we have told Tiffany after the last board meeting that we had was that we wanted her to fill that role temporarily until we determined so that we could advertise the position. Because that, that's a little bit different than what, uh, I, I don't, I'm just speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. um, the assumption was that maybe we were going to looking at not replacing Terry, and that opened the door for a lot of other discussion. But if the intents to put that full-time director back in place, then our our discussions and decisions are a little bit different than what what we've had. Right. I think if. Um, and I know that it probably wasn't made available to the, the council, but I know it was made available to the, the, the FEDCO board, uh, the, the list of roles, responsibility, the different things are worked on. I just don't see a way that it can be done uh, without a replacement. Now, I think it, it always makes sense anytime you're given the opportunity to reevaluate, see where you can be better, see if, you know, reevaluate the whole thing. Uh, and, and I think it would only be prudent to do that, and that is the plan. But at least in, in my mind, I have never thought that it would be done without uh, leadership and direction from an executive director. I will say this. I was following Marty's thoughts. I was reporting it, following your thoughts also, which. Great. That's how I understood okay. yeah, that we were looking at a restructure. Yeah, I, I, David, I, you know, you've been around as long as I have. Fedco's been a, a, a subject that's been on the radar for a lot of years, and we get lots of input regarding Fedco, what uh, what the community thinks about it, and everybody looks at it, uh, it a different way. The expectations of what the economic development presence should be doing. Um, 
I don't know. I just, you know, it's, it's time, you know, if you bring somebody in and you show them the list you're talking about, they may tell you three-fourths of the things on there were put together by consultants, and they don't really mean that much. Somebody came in and said, put that on the list. I don't know. I, what, what I do know is the, the, uh, the out, going out there and uh, uh, researching the potential for jobs and uh, the, the moving uh, businesses in, into our community, we've not been real successful with that. Um, I, I think our job retention's been good. I think we have, what, 150 to 200 job openings at the industrial level uh, locally. I, I, you know, I, I think we have been, uh, I, I think we're doing okay. I think we can always be better. But I, I don't know that the answer right now is bring in uh, a lot of more jobs. I, I think we need to focus, and Ted, you and I have, have had this conversation, it's economic development's multifaceted. You know, if, if you need workers and you don't have uh, a quality of life, you don't have places for them to live, then that becomes part of the economic development package. And I, I think that that's where you start looking at some of those programs and, and, and done, and that, that wasn't compiled by consultants, that was compiled by uh, the, the staff there to determine to make sure we didn't let anything, any ball drop during this time. So we knew how to assign the positions, how to assign <coughs> roles and responsibilities within that office to make sure that we were serving the community the way uh, the taxpayers would want it done. So that's where that list came from. So, no, and, and I've been over that list, as I mentioned to you. But what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is the original input for that list, for the director to put those things on the list, came from outside. Uh, I, I was not involved when that was done. I don't know if you were on the board at that time no, I, or not. I, 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 just I, I was not, so I, I cannot address that back to it. Okay. But, I mean, council, it, it's entirely up to this council how we how we move forward with this. Uh, again, appreciate your chewing it over. I, I think I see this as more of an opportunity to say that maybe the, the city council and the county council and the economic development need to work together more as a team so that all three of us really kind of understand a little more of what's going on and and how to redirect it because the way i understand economic development it depends on the area and what that area needs so just because somebody's doing economic development like in South Bend doesn't mean that it's the same thing as Rochester so or Fulton County so yeah, how do right. we know what they're doing in Fulton County when we really don't have discussions uh, between us and and does then the county also has to pay for some of that so are they happy with that too and what are their expectations and that is regardless I think is what's lacking and so who is who is that who is the economic development person answering to well the board answer? representation has representation by Brian back to the City Council uh, Ted was on and has made an appointment uh, by a board of works member that sits on the board you have a county commissioner on the board and you have a county councilman on the board. So there really shouldn't be a reason why you don't have representation on the board to, to get feedback, I guess. I, so then if we've been dissatisfied basically with the outcome or think that things need to change or it's not worth, we're not getting the value, <coughs> why wasn't things changed for you? I mean, because isn't that kind of the way it is? It's, hey, you're kind of working for us. And I, you know, so so just because somebody steps away to say, hey, let's let's stop this whole entire economic development. I mean, because what happens if we don't give the money? What what would happen if we don't give the money right now? Okay, and, and if we we disagree with that, what's going to happen with what they're doing next year? And what they have planned, even without a head. Well, I think it falls apart. It I, falls. I think and, and and who loses then? Do we lose grants right now that's in the works? Do we lose? I mean, give give us a couple of things that that what's going to be lost 
if we say, yeah, you know what, we, we don't want to give you any money. We'll, we'll compile that list. We'll have it for you. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great if you could get something like that together, mm -hmm. David, before our next meeting. That would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you and, and, and Rick and Brian could have a good handle on that to start filling them in since you guys have been at that seat for well, as long as I've been on the board. Yeah. Well, I might, I might also remind you that for five years now, we have had an active part in playing it, but for, you know, 20 years before that, it was all county. Our seat of money's one. You're five county. Trump's my tenure, Ted, so yeah. that's why I see you as a senior guy on there. Yeah, but, but there was 20 plus years of all of our seated money going to one entity to run FEDCO. So, I mean, this this stuff just hasn't come up overnight. There's there's, there's things in, if we don't take the opportunity to try and do it better, uh, we're missing the boat. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean cut the funding, but we've got to reshape it in some fashion. I, I believe. Well, if you recall, we looked at a restructure and did that within the last uh, year, year and a half. So we, we did make strides to do that. We did a reconfiguration of everything. So, in, and you were involved with that, uh, Ted, at the time. So, exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, we, we have, this isn't like we haven't looked at this thing in the last five years either. We, we've looked at it, we've restructured it, uh, we feel like we have a good structure, and then, you know, as I said, I think you always have to be looking at, to Ruth's point, economic development is different when times are different. So I think any time you're given the opportunity, you need to step back and say, are we the best we can be? How can we restructure? I, I would hope the city does that on an annual basis too. Well, we certainly but I, do but that. I, you know, we, we, it, I, I don't want anyone to be misled that this thing has been a, a loose cannon for 20 years. Uh, when, when I don't think that is the case in, since I came on and, and you guys have been on there and, and the things that we've looked at and the way that we have looked at things to try to restructure to make sure we were doing the best we could. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the evaluation and the restructuring and everything, yeah, we do. We do that. We also do it with our vendors and make an a, a assessment and appraisal of our vendors. Fedco is one of our vendors. Uh, one of the council folks up here who will remain nameless pointed out to me that over 18 years, we've got a $5 million investment there. Show me the return on that. And that's tough. That's tough to bring out and lay out in front and say, here's, here's, here's what we did with that in lieu of buying T-bills. This is what our return is. Uh, so, I mean, there's a, there's a lot for this group to chew over here. That, uh, several of them have been here for quite a while and have gone through several years of this. Some haven't. Some it's relatively new to. Uh, so I, again, appreciate you guys chewing it up and giving your thoughts. And I, I would ask and encourage any one of you uh, afterwards, I'll give you my cell phone, please feel free to reach out individually too so I can help you understand and answer any questions you have individually. So as we think about the future of economic development, what the structure will be, what the vision is for the county and city, um, hopefully getting all moving forward. Where does the current funding come from? I, I you know, Mar asked what, what kind of timeline they're on, and I have a little bit of an interest with well, the comes, chamber. It comes from you. Right. The economic development funds, that's an income tax, seated funds. Right, but how, how does that get to FEDCO after December 31st as we're mulling over oh. a plan. We make, what is it, two payments a year? No, monthly. Monthly. So. Yeah, and, and that's, a good, that's a good question, because you know we don't know. It's income, income tax. So, no, yeah. if, if I may. Uh, Tiffany usually sends us an invoice, and we pay off the invoice based on the contract. So the Fedco, the total Fedco contract amount, is broke down in twelve monthly payments. Yeah, but so that way it's an easier cash flow for Fedco. Right. But but it's a, it's a it's a bureaucratic municipal uh, structure. You don't know what you're going to get until those taxes come in. Right. That income tax is collected. Well, we with income tax we do for next year. We already have those projected numbers for income tax sure. for next year. Projected. Yes. Um, because income tax, you can think about it, you pay your taxes, 
in April you fire your taxes so that way we know the following year how much income we're actually going to get so for 2022 we're pretty confident we know what our income will be on income tax we don't know after that because it's you're you're usually 18 to 24 months behind on income taxes but to her point is the in, the monies we pay are based on the contract agreement so whatever total contract agreement you guys decide that looks like this past year was 109 110,000 whatever that was and then I just got a monthly bill so but as far as our income coming in from seed of funds and income tax yes we don't know what that's going to look like 2023 we're pretty have a pretty good handle on it for 2022 so you're, you're concerned about cash flow situation coming yes. in because of the shared building and such mm -hmm. yeah well without a contract it's hard for any of these projects to to get done in the meantime you know we have tiffany who's thank god she stepped up as interim director and she's taken on that role but you know without that contract as of 12 31 if that doesn't get renewed or doesn't get signed for 22 I, I don't think she's here so then you don't have anybody to respond to the needs you don't have anybody representing fedco as it is so until we decide as a county as a city to restructure what that looks like what the plan what the vision is there is no fedco Change brings opportunity. We obviously have a change. Um, part of FEDCO's problem is they can't talk about a lot of what they do. Uh, for one reason or another, the developer doesn't want it talked about, the entrepreneur doesn't want it talked about, or, and all those things. But the reality is we, we have a change. Um, so we have an opportunity, and we have an opportunity uh, to get a, a more single focus on economic development between FEDCO, between the county, between the city. Uh, Terry did a lot of things very well, and I'm sure he did some things that in hindsight he, he would have done differently, or, uh, or, or maybe other people would have asked to do differently. I, I, I don't know. We don't know the inner workings of uh, FEDCO, but um, we have an opportunity, like Ruth has said a couple of times, about getting a direction that the that, uh, city and county can feel good about working uh, together with, with the leadership of FEDCO. We obviously have uh, tremendous asset in, in David with the president of FEDCO. So we've, we've got an opportunity to get this thing fixed and moving in the right direction. Now, how, how we fund it, how much we fund and all that, but we owe it to FEDCO and to the people involved, including Tiffany, uh, to be prepared to make a decision within 30 days. Uh, we probably can't make it tonight without some more discussion and information. I I would make a motion, but I'm afraid it it wouldn't pass tonight based on comments. But um, can we commit to do that as a council? I have a question, David. Uh, it's, it's out there that we don't have a, a Lido. Has anybody contacted you from the uh, ED world to say, hey, I'm a Lido, I'm looking for a position? No, we haven't uh, really advertised that we're going to be looking. Oh, it's a small, it's a small world out there. <laughs> I mean, there, 
all of our all of our county. Has anyone reached, reached out to folks. you? All, well, the regional folks all know about it. Um, no, nobody has said, "Gee, I'd like to interview for that Lido job." But you know, it's known. It's out there. I think our situation is known too. <clears throat> Part of our problem, as I uh, as I've been sitting there, is we do have trouble working together with the county, and that's kind of, that's kind of a struggle. And we were kind of at this crossroad a year or so ago where the county was in question on funding. And the way we're split, you know, the city is covering half, the county's covering half. Um, and I know for an organization that is working on long-term projects to go before the board every six months, every year, how can you long-term plan? And, you know, that, that's contributed to, I think, to our, our problems. And you know, everyone keeps talking about this is our opportunity to change, but I've yet to hear a viable change everyone would like to see, either from the county or from, the, or from this body. Um, and as, as we stand, we have an organization that doesn't get its funding, it's, it, it, can't, it can't function. And there's a lot of ramifications that, with FedCo, because FedCo does own assets. And the way we're split now, if FedCo goes away, where do those assets go? Are they turned over to the state? Do we cut them down the middle with the county and the city? I mean, it's it's not it's not cut and dry. And 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 we also have the direct um, link with the chamber, with FedCo, as well as AHAC. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that are dependent on this organization. So I guess what I'm saying is we owe it to our constituents to the you know to the members of FedCo to decide what what we want to see and how we're going to move forward and you know we can't keep just leaving everything in limbo I mean I I understand we need 30 days to digest and, and get fine but you know that's another 30 days that we can't FedCo cannot advertise and that's you know prolonging knowing how we're going to look moving forward and you know we and the you know the last meeting I was at, the board, you know, mayor in attendance, uh, county, and so you know we all decided yes we want this organization to go together to move forward. But what does that look like? Don't misconstrue my uh, my use of the word change because I can't make that. I was. Uh, I was saying it's an opportunity mm -hmm. for FEDCO, as we have known and supported it, to maybe align things a little differently. Um, not not talking about changing our funding process. So yeah, we're going to have new people. We're going to have new ideas. It's an opportunity that maybe somebody in that. Uh, group that can help bring the city and the county working together in that. So I, w I wasn't meaning changing the way we fund FEDCO. I, I just want to throw all that out there. Um, I believe the county the county has committed to next year, right? Is that a call? I believe so, but I, I'm actually going to be meeting with them soon. If, if they have, there should be a signed contract because we all get contracts. Do we know and how much is needed from the city to like keep the doors open for FedCal? It's 110,000. Is that what we're still looking at? Okay. Well, that but was the first contract. Yeah, that was an 18 year lead. Oh, it was paid $70,000. Yeah. 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 That was an 18 year lead. Oh, it was paid $70,000 a year, too. But is that going to change? I mean, how, there are some you know, questions. There's a lot of questions, and that's why we we need some guidance. So yeah, I guess I would. How are we going to satisfy you know John questions you have? How do how do we how are we proactive and you know instead of just pushing it off till next next month? What do we need to do? What can I do to answer any questions you guys might have so we can? Well, are, are you are you prepared to make a motion? Tonight, I mean, the council.
councils express the desire to, <laughs> I mean, to, to get some questions it. answered, and then we we push it tonight. That you know, we're, we're voting without all the info. I mean, there's still questions, and I want to make sure all the questions are answered before we, you know, just jump in. It would be helpful, I think, to have some of the information that was mentioned, the roles and responsibilities. I haven't seen who else has seen that. Um, just to be able to formulate, you know, what needs to be done if there is one individual or if that can be split up among other individuals. Yeah. I think maybe that's something we could tie into the art committee. And as a group, since we're going to be gathering on the 19th, with this as well. We can bring the information we put together. We've got job descriptions. We can bring the job descriptions forward. See that you get that information. Again, we have people sitting here on board at all levels of uh, experience with this. <clears throat> Garrett's been around since the first day. Yes, I have. <laughs> so, I lost my ear. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get uh, you the job descriptions and so. And David, do you, do you know the information he's asking for? From I believe so. Okay. And again, uh, everyone will have my cell phone number. Feel free to use it. All right. We could have a special meeting at any time. <coughs> we don't have to wait 30 days. We'll get the information. We can meet. He just mentioned a uh, discussion on the 19th about it. Included in with that month. Uh, that on a special meeting. Clarify, Ruth. I know you won a list of the crash and burn items on Fed Code. You want something similar from the chamber if if there's a potential impact there? Yeah. Yeah. The more information the yeah. better. Yeah. Chuck offered that up. Or you want to, <laughs> you want to retract that on it? Be able to share the information that you gather from talking with the county. Then I, I don't see any reason why not. It'll be public information, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Well, then let's move on to the uh, ready grant. Uh, this group has not had any formal discussions of, regarding the ready grant. I uh, don't know how much you are aware of what's involved. I have been asked by um, Stephen Ray, Randy Sutton, Terry Lee, and now as of late uh, last Friday, Paul Wyman, who is the uh, commissioner for Howard County. I believe he's, uh, well, I do know he's now the new president of the North Central region. And uh, they have all wanted me to sign a letter of support for the uh, Ready Grant that uh, I balked on. It was written by Stephen Ray. And uh, I'll just read it to you. Uh, it's to Bradley Chambers, the Secretary of Commerce, who is over the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, IEDC, who is going to make the determining factor as to what regions get what money and uh, how much money they do get, what projects in the region will be chosen for the money. Uh, they have $500 million to disperse. Uh, they were shocked right out of the box. They thought it was going to be a little easier than what it's turned out to be. They thought they would see about 10 regions. So there could be up to $50 million dedicated to each region. Well, they've had 17 respond. So there's going to be uh, balancing act as to how the monies will be distributed uh, and uh, the process as I have understood it is each region 
Our region, the North Central region, is made up of six counties, and uh, each region we're asked to solicit from uh, uh, all over the people in their community and whatever what they thought would be uh, viable projects and important projects. And uh, the six counties then got together and pulled the, uh, the lists together. There was a steering committee, I believe Jana was part of the steering committee, but you weren't part of the internal committee where you did the weighting of all the projects. Yes. You, you were involved in the weighting? Yes. Okay, and the choosing of, from the hundred or so, the list. Yes, the Every, list. Yeah, everybody on the steering committee throughout all of the counties did that. Participated in going through the weighting of each one. So you went through a hundred projects and weighted each one we of them? We sat in a room down in Kokomo and did that together. Okay. Yes. And uh, as of three weeks ago, uh, Chris Ham provided me with a list of 22 projects. That was three weeks ago. And uh, of that list, there were, oh, there were, let's see, there were four or five on there for Howard County, uh, four or five for uh, uh, Cass County, Miami County. It went down the list. Fulton County had one. Fulton and Clinton County at the time had one. Uh, and then there was a meeting, a uh, follow-up meeting to that about a week ago, and the list grew a little bit. And the latest, I knew there was a list of 28. Now, is that still uh, relative? Jana, is that what you have? I'm looking at the latest rough draft that I received to see the specific projects you're saying? Yes, uh, the list to be supplied to the IEDC. And you folks have a copy of this list. Do you have a copy of the, the grant application itself? I do not. Okay. I just have the list. Now, on the list, it, it designates what is being asked for dollar-wise for each project, adding up to 50 million total. So would you like for me to read through where they are. Do you have a different project list? Do you have something that's more or less than 28? I have an actual copy, being on the steering committee, I have the actual copy of the draft that's 98% complete to be sent in as the application process. Is that 28 projects? Um, actually, as of last Friday. Um, again, the, the and, and you must have participated in that meeting, there was an additional six projects brought forward that had to go through the, the evaluation and the weighing process to see whether they should make the list or not. And it was, it was agreed that they should. And uh, at that time also, I was told that the, uh, the request from Fulton County was to change from a project that had been on the original 22 to the uh, Manitou Meadows project. So one was pulled, one was added, made the list of 28. Now, um, this is of course the 50% uh, match. And like I said, the, the, the projects all had to add up to uh, 50 million. I, I was a hesitant in signing a letter of support when I looked at the list and I saw eight things on there for Howard County and now they picked up three more projects. And, and it was just that way and then here's little dinky Clinton and Fulton with their little bitty project. Uh, let me read the letter and then you'll probably see why I had some reservations. Dear Mr. Chambers, the elected officials of North Central Indiana are fully committed to and supportive 
of the North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council's plan, the North Central Ready Plan. Uh, the North Central Ready Plan is the result of a concentrated planning effort to engage our industry and business leaders, community and civic leaders, education, workforce, economic development professionals, as well as our local elected officials. This plan will serve as an update to the NCIRTC 2017 Comprehensive Economic Development Strategic Plan, as the Ready Plan focuses on key strategies to attract, retain population, develop a talent and highly skilled workforce, and connect that pipeline to jobs to ensure economic sustainability throughout the region. North Central Indiana is uniquely positioned to deliver creative and innovative regional solutions. We seek to build our previous efforts and past build on our previous efforts and past successes. The Ready program will allow for transformational projects to accelerate residential growth, economic opportunities. Our plan focuses on strategic areas: workforce and education, quality of life, housing, and public infrastructure. Collaboratively, the North Central Region has identified common local issues developed in a collective regional strategy. We believe strong local communities are the foundation of stronger regional economics. We, the elected officials of North Central Indiana, fully support the region's ready initiative and are committed to the successful implementation. This initiative will have long lasting generational impact. Thank you for the consideration of our application. And uh, uh, again, I had some difficulty in explaining this to uh, Paul Weinman who, by the way, is coming to see me tomorrow. We're going to discuss the region and uh, our situation in, in some detail. Mm -hmm. But um, under Fulton County, he's got, uh, for signature, Brian Lewis, uh, Randy Sutton, and Ted Dett, Mayor of Rochester. I didn't feel till we met tonight, and I, as you can tell by this letter, he said that I am representing all of the elected. And until I threw this out tonight, I didn't know that to be a correct statement. And that's what I'm putting forward to you folks tonight. If I sign that, is that a correct statement? Is there a hundred percent support? So the hundred percent support means there has to be a 50-50 match for the project. That's done by the ready grant, correct? Well, that's, that's, that's the ready grant. So 50-50 so match on the project that you're doing for your county. Uh, this doesn't really that commit to any money, no. Right. So no. That means the entire ready grant in our six county districts, I would Exactly. Who we support. I would think it's not us. So, so no matter what we get, every single county has to pay the same amount. No. no. Okay. Because no. I, I, how, how many projects did we suggest to get done or, or that the ready grant help with? So it goes a little bit deeper in that you had to have specific breakdowns. And so although only one of the projects listed is a, is a housing project for Fulton County there are other areas where Fulton County was included so when you see anything that says regional it means that Fulton County would also benefit from it so the child care study the broadband phase uh, one stage um, the regional housing authority which goes much deeper than just housing projects college completion pathways industry 4.0 training labs uh, center of excellence anything throughout that that you see where it says regional Fulton County has snippets of that that could come to, into the community and so back to the question we had to look at what was shovel ready what was already happening those types of things and then you had to make sure that you had public investment and private investment before they would come in with the matching funds so they weren't just going to give the 50 million and say here you are start your projects they wanted to make sure that there was community and regional buy-in in this uh, that that they had been well thought out, that we had communicated with, it, communicated with other partners before it made the list. And then you couldn't exceed the 50 million and you had to have your matching grants between public and private investment. 
Yeah, the first 15 on the list are designated as shovel-ready projects. They're ready to go. The last 13 are shovel-worthy. means to, to be determined, right? I mean, Correct. So shovel-ready, for example, and I can use Rochester Schools as part of that when we're talking about um, the, the work development, those types of things would be our transition at the Learning Center to bring in more career pathways. So that is shovel ready. Rochester Schools is already investigating that. We're already on the road to that. Um, we've said that we're getting ready for the pre-bid meeting. So those are the shovel ready parts that fall into this. And then the others are ones that we believe could help uh, with economic growth and development with every community and then at the regional level. And those were the ones then that came in later on the list. Well, I mean, you've been involved for quite a while here. The, the Meadows Project, for example, with 660 apartments. Uh, how, have yeah, there been, were there discussions how that would affect your planning for this, this grant as well, the school? Absolutely. If part of what we hear at the school level is that we don't have affordable housing here. What many of our families struggle with, um, so 68%, 68%, right at, that are free and reduced lunch in our uh, school community yet if you look at the grant we have the highest graduation rate and so we are doing things well within the school district but what families are telling us is they can't afford the housing and so um, this would help bring in those families uh, that have been looking at our area with affordable housing um, many can't afford the homes up around the lake. Others have told us that they can't afford to buy a $30,000 home and then put 80000 more into it. But in the same respect, the information we gathered and we collected survey information, we put that out to our parents, those types of things. And if you look through this, is also the child care study. So Rochester was very much part of the child care study. One of the things that Rochester schools did was open up more preschool. We're looking at the, the three-year-old in the uh, daycare center as part of that. So when you see the child care study, it's not that, right, that Fulton County is only going to benefit from one project. It's that we have snippets in each of those, including the child care study that made the top of that list. No, I, I understand affordable housing and the child care and all that. No, my question directly applies to the school resources. If you had 500 to 1,000 students to deal with in the next three, four years, what, how would that impact the school's plans? It would be tremendous for Rochester schools because we continue to see a decline uh, in our enrollment. And if more families move in with more students, that only increases our ADM, which is our educational fund, and it will help us with programming, with teachers, with benefits, with salaries, those types of things. And if you're asking if we have enough room at this point to hold those students, that absolutely. That was my question. Absolutely we do. That would be a blessing for Rochester schools. Uh, Jen, I noticed on, on the list, we're the first project that doesn't have a lead entity listed. Does that have any impact on the, the rating of, and, and will that, is that any of any significance on the list? I'm not sure exactly what you're looking at, Mark. I apologize. May I see what you're looking at? Or is that I, not? I noticed Ivy Tech and the counties and uh, somebody's listed on most of the projects, but. specifically no and it doesn't settle anything no it's the whole local the region the region's process here and mark no when when they were talking about lead entities in this as i recall 
when we were having those conversations, when we talked about workforce development, obviously Ivy Tech has the largest umbrella in workforce development. So they kind of took the lead in gathering information, those types of things, to help better understand um, the community growth and then the regional growth that could come out of that. And Ivy Tech is an entity in, in every county with workforce development, including Rochester schools. And so they were the lead person with the most information or knowledge or co could help disseminate the information. Okay. I, I don't have any problem with you signing that. I mean, as... As a representative of the elected. Well, in, in support of the Ready Grant program, it, whether Falcon County gets a project or not, we're, we're still going to appreciate some of the some of the projects and have some uh, tertiary uh, advancement with it or, or improvement in our community because of it. Um, I would think. I mean, that that's exactly how the grant is set set up. Is that whether or not we get a large portion of it, the regional portions of it would go to everybody. So it would help with child care studies, with our phase one of broadband, those types of things, which would directly benefit Fulton County. And just one step further, and maybe this is too much into the minutia of it, how would those portions of funds then be distributed? Would that be out of the uh, the hierarchy of the region, president, vice president, the board, for the, yeah, so, the so they are forming uh, representation from each county to set on that specific board of governance. Okay. Anybody have any issue then with uh, my signing for the elected? I, no. I guess I would say, I think you're only signing for yourself. If they wanted to send them to each of us, they would have done that, or to the council. No, you're not signing for the elected. No, the, the, the elected is the undersigned. Yeah, are you, if, as an example, if the county said, we're not going to sign it, are you signing on their behalf? L Lewis signed for the commissioners, Sutton okay. signed for the council, okay. uh, and Denton signs for the city of elected of Rochester. So, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have two people sitting there saying, why are you signing something? we're not in support of it. This is the first we've had an opportunity to talk. Also is, I get a little gidgy about signing any letter anybody writes that I don't write. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not that guy. So does anybody have any issue with what I read? No. No. Okay. no, after Gianna's explanation, I feel a lot more comfortable with it. Okay, okay. Well, Commissioner Wyman will be here to, uh, I'm sure, pick it up. Thank you. Um, gosh darn, do I still have any superintendents in the room? Do I? Not no? going for long. Gee, they are. <laughs> 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 I'm running out. They're still here. It's tough having a chief of police that's so shy. You know? <laughs> uh, just a quick thing on the trick or treat hours. The Board of uh, Works has. Uh, Recommended October the 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. for trick or treating and Boo Fest on the 29th from 4 to 6. Anybody on the council have any problems? Could I have a motion I, to that? I'm just wondering why, why the two different nights? Why, why, why Halloween Halloween is a Sunday. Boo Fest. Halloween is a Sunday and uh, we can't get anybody to church. None of the businesses are open on Sunday. Sure. So for Boo Fest, we really had to do it on a Friday night. <clears throat> We can do it any weekday, we just can't do it on weekends. The motion's made Second. by Goodman, seconded by uh, Todd. Any Are you okay. worried about the businesses running out of candy? Did you actually say because that? Because in the years past, it's always been an hour. For real, it's always been an hour, and now we're doing it two hours. Is it long? Yeah. Okay, well, we could do a shorter hour. I don't long. care. I'm just, I want to make sure you let the, the businesses know where it's, it's an extra hour or so. Well, they're going to buy more candy. <laughs> they're going to need to buy more candy than they did in years past. It's only been an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Four thirty. What did you say? What did we say? Four thirty. Five thirty. Four thirty. Five thirty. Yeah. 
four thirty to five thirty. <coughs> what is it, Harry? You give out a couple hundred bucks worth of candy? Oh, okay. Four thousand pieces of candy. Oh my yeah. gosh. So if you extend that so, an extra hour, can imagine what that's going to be for. Well, I don't think there was an intent to extend it. I'll talk to Christine about that, but um, Harry it usually does, kind of runs the scores. Harry does a great thing. With every other candy bar, he hands out a metformin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, okay. So what do so you want to leave it to, or do you want me to amend my motion to write it down to so one hour? Or? Well, yeah, you guys don't need to approve the booth. Are they that doing was just an like a contest? Oh, she mentioned yeah, something about that. Talking about your I don't know. Move on, Mr. President. Moving on. Okay, uh, ordinance and <laughs> resolution. We have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah we're, we're, we're right, right back. Right. 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 Yes, I was in a sugar coma. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've got a uh, couple or uh, ordinance and a resolution here. Ordinance 12-2021-2022 budget, the second and third readings. We, this is the one we had the first reading. Yes. Uh, yeah, and the resolution's already done, so we can mark that one off. Uh, do I have a motion for the second reading of ordinance 12-2021-2022 budget? By title only? Sure. Sure. Why not? We were all on that page. Sure. By title only. So moved. Tosh made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Brian seconded. Those in favor? Okay. By title only. Well, they okay. I have a copy. Oh. Yeah. And I did, now, everybody, if y'all noticed in your council packet, I made triple, quadruple sure that every number was where it needed to be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it isn't the problem. No zeros. It, it isn't the problem there. It's getting it over to the computer. I'm not going to pass the button. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> We'll just resolution for appropriation we'll of tax it. rates, ordinance, <laughs> resolution number 12-2021. Okay, any discussion? Do I have a, a motion to suspend the rules and have the third reading by title on the motion? No, <laughs> Did you get that? Goodman and Goodman then Smith. And, and Smith. Yeah. Yeah, bam, bam. Got it. Okay. Those in favor? Okay, by title only. Uh, ordinance resolution for appropriation and tax rates, ordinance resolution number 12 2021. Any discussions? Do I have a motion uh, for the approval of uh, Ordinance 12 2021 2022 budget? So moved. Second. Same one, two again. Those in favor? No, that was Brian. Not that was, I know that was I got it. Unanimous shot. <laughs> it was unanimous. Yes. Okay, Chief Butler, boy, man, you're up. Good evening. For the month of August, Rochester Fire, Structure Fires, two Rochester Township, Dryer Fires, one in the city. Mutual aid fires, two in Henry Township. Vehicle fires, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, two in Newcastle Township. Auto fire alarms, one in the city, five in Rochester Township. Grass brush fires, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Down power lines, one in Newcastle Township. Calls for smoke, one in the city. Accidents, two in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Medical assist, 18 in the city, five in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. CO checks, one in the city. Gas leaks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Service calls, one in Rochester Township. Canceled calls, three in the city, two in Henry Township for a total of 59 calls, and we conducted one drill and training. Wow. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Questions? Thank Can you. On? <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Chief, I mean, the council doesn't get to hear this, the Board of Works does, but could you give a short uh, explanation of the baby box uh, program? Correct. Uh, the Knights of Columbus out of the St. Joe Church had uh, collected money and got um, a baby box, a safe haven box which is going to be mounted at the fire station. I'm in direct contact with contractors now to try to get this installed. What it is, it's a unanimous box where a mother can come up. There'll be some literature and some instructions on the outside of the box. There is no camera uh, uh, and we don't have any cameras at all at the fire station. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that publicly, <laughs> but, um, but we're man we're, we're man 24 hours. So so what can happen is if 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 a, if a mother or a family is overwhelmed with a newborn and don't know what to do with it, they can come to this fire station. They'll be able to open the box. Um, once the baby is placed in the box, there's a sensor in the box. So when that door is shut, the box then becomes locked. Once the alarm, once the door is open, there's a silent alarm sent to dispatch where they, they know that someone's by the box. 
So they will alert us probably telephonically saying, hey, did you have some activity at the baby box. Once the baby is placed inside, another mechanism is, is secure. So when that door shuts, it locks. Mom cannot then change her mind at that time. We'll have instructions on who to call Child Protective Services, take the baby to the emergency room, get it checked out to make sure it's safe and sound, and, and then the, the baby is, is then awarded the state at that time, the way I understand it. But it's, it's a safe alternative so the, the, the child um, has a chance. Uh, if, if the family's overwhelmed, either financially or, or whatever the problem is, where they, they feel they, they, they can't cope with, with the raising a newborn, this will be a, an option for that child to have have a chance at life. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the Chief? Chief Shots. You've got my report. Let me know if you have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay, Randy. <clears throat> Dwayne and I finished the uh, street evaluation, so I got to load the data into the LTAP's DMS system, which will put us eligible for a community crossings grant next year. Uh, we have an October 19th uh, field check with, the fed with uh, MDOT for our federal highway sidewalk and ADA ramp upgrade. And also next week, we should have the prints for the 4th Street ADA sidewalk project. That's all I got. Thank you. Any questions for Randy? Thank you. Okay, and the order is not here. Altman's not here. Derek Holloway. He's not here. He left. Oh my gosh. Okay. He's gone. Okay. Hey, so much for the reports. Uh, Harry, anything on downtown partnership? Only thing I add to move fast is we are going to ask people to walk just one way and one way only around town. So oh, fast. wait. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to try to post some arrow signs and so getting the word out on the radio and stuff that, uh -huh. that they'll be kind of trying to keep traffic directional and spaced a little bit. And there won't be anything else that night. There's just going to be the trick or treating. There won't be any costume contests or games. It'll just be the trick or treating portion. We haven't heard anything. Is there going to be a, a trunk in the park? Have you heard anything from the churches? I, I have not heard a word. Someone mentioned it to me, and yeah, they plan on it. David, I hate to put you on the spot. Anything from Grace? Uh, Grace will be doing one, it's my understanding. But I'm not directly involved, but it's my understanding that they are planning on doing something. And businesses that are in the surrounding area that don't have a Main Street or A Street presence are welcome to come and, and participate in Booth Fest by, you know, we can put them in front of some, some properties that aren't doing anything. They like like Akron or Tijuana or okay. whatever. Okay. We got candy. <laughs> Bring candy. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Harry. Uh, David, anything on Lake Manitou Association? We've been here long enough. Lake straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruth, anything on area plan permission? Uh, it's not so active right, right now. Meeting. Okay. No meeting. Gone over Fedco, uh, redevelopment commission meeting in the morning, uh, park board chase. I know. Okay. Uh, BZA Council on Aging, Marty. Yeah, a lot of pressure to be brief. Now, this is one of those <laughs> months where both of my meetings have Which been held. Which might have a cup of coffee. So, <laughs> so, I was. Sorry, I got, I got stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, Marty. Uh, BZA met last week, last Wednesday. They had, uh, again, had another five items on the agenda, all of which uh, passed at five to nothing. So uh, variances were granted for a cardboard on Rochester Boulevard, a swimming pool out on Country Club Drive, the utility shed in Maples Court. Uh, a brand new building on Blackadder Drive and a new home of Wolf's Point. So, and uh, for the month of August, I believe the city revenue would have been $147.50 for uh, 10 permit fees and 
$385 for 10 inspection fees. Council on Aging met yesterday. Uh, the big news out of the council is that October 1, we are going back to the original hours of 7 to 5. Um, and that, that will start uh, next, no, that starts this week, doesn't it, October 1. They are looking, uh, Transpo is looking for another driver, one more to hire. RSVP is planning a trip to Branson. There are 14 spots left available. If anybody's interested, that's on the agenda. Um, the council is moving to direct deposit uh, paychecks at First Federal. Um, new LED lights are going into the garage. Uh, and uh, there is, Ted, if you want to go to a costume party, there is a costume party on the 29th. Uh, show up anytime in your mask. Are and you and I going as the M&Ms again? We, we could. Yeah. And on October 19th at uh, 12.30 to 2 o'clock, there's a concert in the building. Okay. All right. Last month, they had an Elvis impersonator. And oh, no. Really? Awesome. Okay. Uh, we did find, I, I'll get it to you. We did find some documentation on the ownership of the garage. It is a county owned facility. We have the city uh, gave that property for that garage to be built on for a buck. Uh, yeah. the, the lease of it for a buck for, I don't know, 99 years or whatever. And but it was a county sponsored uh, grant and uh, they had the responsibility for it. We got found it, an archive. Awesome. Okay. If I can get that, I'll get it to them. And okay. That'd be great. Thank you. You bet. That somewhere, somebody's got to have the original grant uh, paperwork. That'd be at the county somewhere. <coughs> or, what was it? Well, we got Dutch, maybe it's <laughs> yeah. Dutch. facilitated a lot of the documents that we found so and I know Mindy was very meticulous about keeping records so they can I would guess the that there might be something there and it's the county it's the sponsorship for it's Rodriguez oh, champion the project and uh, the, 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 pro the, the property went to him for a buck for the city that was what the city had okay. all right uh, solid waste and animal adoption center Councilman Wilson Yes, we did have our meeting for the Recycling Center, uh, Solid Waste District. For June, 57,181 tons of waste were brought in. Fulton County accounted for 16% of that. In July, 41,189 tons of waste brought in. We accounted for 13% of that. The rest being brought in from mostly from Indiana. Um, the county received $64,784 in June and $39,597 in July. Uh, as for the Animal Center, the only thing really that we discussed at the meeting was board member uh, kind of roles and responsibilities and they created a statement of understanding that each board member now has to sign that was the extent of it okay any questions councilman wilson thanks todd mm -hmm. uh, water board well no i'm sorry tree board and ems brian tree board the uh not a whole lot happened because there was no quorum, but the, the reporting that the uh, removal contracts are going on, uh, everything's still going with those proceeding, 
and the, uh, the tree inventory is wrapping up, so we should have that done soon. I believe uh, it's complete. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was into some parts were done. They were talking about doing something else, maybe doing something else. And, but then since there was no quorum, they didn't really, nothing was voted on or anything. And if I understand it right, we came in a little bit under the grant. We did, but that's where the conversation then goes to because we had the conversations about the parks and the golf course. And the golf course, so right. right. They add to it. That's, yeah, so they couldn't make that decision. I think they had to, they did come under, but not enough money to cover both of those, so it will take some decision on that. That's good stuff. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, uh, water board. John. If Derek always has it going. Everything's running fine at the water board, right? and everything's going well with them. Yeah. And we've all got water. Be happy. Life is good. Uh, we, uh, the board uh, did purchase uh, the property just next door that was uh, a Jim, Jim Downs rental. They purchased, and we will be taking that down to clear area and make room for another well some future day. Okay. Uh, anything from the legal department? No, Mr. Mayor. Nothing. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> we had something from. Uh, I'll have to look. It's something from uh, Butcher that showed up. Uh, oh, it was the I think the the ruling from the federal OSHA well, standards. Well, two shots for yeah. federal employees. I didn't read the whole thing. I just covered well, the snippet. Yeah. Feds are mandating mandating uh, the shots for federal employees. So we'll be hearing more and more about that as we're not federal employees. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've had my shot, but we're not federal employees. But that's good information if we if we deal with a federal contractor. Supposed to that's what it was. It was it was going down into the contractor and yeah. subcontractor listing. Yeah. Okay. You probably know all about that. Nope, first I've heard of it. I'll kick it over to you. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> I just you got it. Just got it this afternoon. All right. Okay. Uh, no ADA concerns. Uh, folks, the only cook-off and car show is 10-9. I will be out from I'm gonna miss the chili cook-off. I will be out from 10-4. Hopefully back sometime in the week of the 11th. Have a corny transplant. Are you going to announce who gets to pick your card? I'm oh, I'm sorry. In my absence, da -da -da -da, <laughs> the clerk treasurer will be picking the mayor's car. I'm kind of excited. Got at you. the <laughs> car show. Don't pick something hokey, okay? Seriously, no. Ted. Are you saying there's something hokey in the car show? <laughs> I'm kind of a gearhead. Let's, no, let's no, it'll straight. be something that has daylight on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.